What's up? <clears throat> Welcome back to Devil Dog Fishing for all my tens upon tens of viewers. It's been a while. The last week has been kind of nuts. Uh, got kids' graduation, got a bunch of stuff going on at work. Yada, yada, yada. So today, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go over last week, last uh, three things. Last week, uh, ABA, American Fishing Tour, did a tournament last week. Kind of just do a quick rundown on that. Um, I'm going to go over some reels today. Uh, everything from kind of the entry level reels that I bought when I got back into what I consider mid grade from where I'm at, and even a more expensive reel that um, it's a $250 reel. I didn't pay $250 for it. And yeah, there's reels, $500,000. I'll never get that. Unless somebody wants to sponsor me and hand me those reels, nah, I'm not paying that for a reel. Um, I got a reel that's $250. Uh, I didn't pay $250 for that. And, and I don't know if I'll pay that for a reel, but I'll go over some differences. And then the last thing we'll talk about is actually is tomorrow. Um, I am going to do a... Uh, uh, a, a team tournament with an old buddy of mine that I used to live with, uh, Mark. Uh, we're going to do the Potomac River, River Battle Series. Um, it's a double down. So, uh, unlike the ABA where the American Fishing Tour, it's a little bit lax. It's like, you know, if you pay at the ramp and you pay the big bass, it's 87 bucks. No big deal. Um, the one tomorrow... Uh, now the um, ABA, the uh, Open Series, is the one that I'm really concentrating on. Um, they the next tournament's next weekend for them, but uh, this one's it's two two was it two twenty a boat? I think it's one one ten one twenty per person, two forty a boat. So. Um, Mark's never fished a tournament. Mark's only been on the Potomac a few times, so he's really going for the ride, and I'm gonna see if we can put him in a position to catch some fish, because at that amount of money, I don't wanna just go out there and fish. I wanna give it a go and see if we can pull some cash back in. But uh, last week, ABA, American Fishing Tour. Now, with uh, American Bass Anglers, there's two tours that I do. Uh, I do the Open Series. The next Open Series, I believe, is uh, next week, the 18th. Uh, that one is up on the Chesapeake. Um, that'll be interesting. I haven't fished that water. That's the series. Uh, I co-angle on that one because uh, that's one I just want to kind of measure of, uh, see kind of where I've come from last year to this year. The American Fishing Tour, this, like I said, that's a pretty simple one. There's not much to it. Um, I went in and that one I actually took my boat on, which the first one a couple weeks ago was when my boat, just the battery died, uh, got all that worked out. Um, I don't know, something was draining it. One of the things I wanted to do at some point that I didn't do last year that I just finally bit the bullet, uh, I, I put a battery switch in. It just, for some reason with boats, there's something that's always draining the battery, so... Uh, I battery switch basically kills the power to everything. Not even my trim on the motor will work until I turn that sucker back on. Um, but got my boat in, got across the river, no problem. Um, didn't get a co-angler. I was actually kind of happy about that. Um, so what I did was I kind of fished the same areas that I fished uh, a couple weeks back for the open series along the bank wall over in the check um, and uh, in the morning and, and the crazy thing is 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 I really only used for them I used actually I used two reels I was saying about this talking to a buddy the other day I was like I only use one but I did use a swim jig and I made four casts with the top water but where I was at I, the wind was so bad and my trolling motor so old uh, I, I couldn't even stay in that spot. It just blew me right up on shore. I had to hurry up, dash, get the motor started before I got banked. Um, but I used a wacky worm all day, multiple colors, uh, 
swim jig, which I'm not used to. Uh, I put a Yamamoto craw on the back. Um, in the first hour, wasn't getting much, but I put the swim jig on because I hit this area where there was no structure. It was flat, it was shore. Um, I'm like, let's see how it goes. Uh, got a bite, lost him right at the, uh, right at the boat. Um, had another bite, uh, went over into the chick and it was packed. Um, you know, it's one thing when it's 90 degrees out, like it's been 50, 50, 50, and then Saturday comes at 70, 80, 90, and, but it's been kind of cool all week. Well, last week going into the weekend, it was nice 80 degrees for three, four days straight. So that really got people you know, people are like, oh, we're going out on the boat, and yeah, they're out because everybody, fishing, multiple couple different tournaments, leisures, uh, all the jet skis. Um, I mean, I'm crossing the Potomac, and I'm just boom, boom, and it's all wakes from boats that you don't even see; they're just coming. Um, but it was so packed in there. I'm like, this place has been picked apart. So, after about a um, couple hours, about two hours, uh, I, I wear a watch when I fish. And I wear the watch so I can keep track of how long I'm using, the, I'm casting the bait that I'm on, how long I'm in the area. Um, just so I don't spend too much time in one area, or I can say, you know, look, man, you've been doing this for 40 minutes, give it 10 minutes and then move on, whatever. It just helps me be a little bit more efficient and kind of move off stuff. So I think it was about 10.30ish, because we blasted off around 7, 7.20, somewhere in there. So I had had one bike, lost one at the boat, and I'm like, all right, what do I want to do? Um, I was like, I don't want to get skunk, so let's go somewhere where I know it pretty well so I hauled all the way over to the Occoquan um, and I knew the Occoquan would probably be one of the last places I do for the day because it, it's depending on where you want to go back it's a 20 30 minute ride back in there if you want to ride and get all the way back to the park because it's 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 no wake you can't can't do it you can't go any fast and then you know no wake so um went in there and i get to one spot that i really like i've seen professional guys catch them in this spot i've actually caught them in this spot and then right behind me is one of those mm, those jet boats i mean the real things are just, blah, 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 blah. i mean it's loud you can hear it you can hear it in Maryland so loud. I mean, this thing had like five V8 engines, and it's just roaring. And I'm like, I'm not going to catch a damn thing. This thing's going to scare everything out of here. Um, and it was his dock. It's not like he was being a jerk or anything. He was parking his boat in his dock. I just happened to be there. So, you know, that's on me. As it turned out, whatever he did, I think he scared a fish right onto my hook because that's the one I caught for the day that got in the live well. Um, for the day, I ended up with two bites, one fish in the live well, and one that got away. And that was it. That was it. Um, and it's crazy because there was another... Not a lot of guys got their limits that day. A lot of guys had trouble that day. Um, I ended up, I think, in 18th place. There was one guy in 19th, and then there was like four or five guys in 20th because they didn't they didn't catch anything. So didn't do very well on that one. Uh, that that tour has already had four or five tournaments. Like I said, I'm not too worried about where I stand in that. But a lot of other guys had trouble. Um, seemed like a lot of guys were catching catfish. And in, in one of the areas I was in, I like fishing it. Um, but there was a boat in there and then this other hillbilly boat came in and like, how y'all doing? He's like, we caught like 37 fish, 25 cats, saved a carp and 
two white perch or whatever, and I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. Um, the, the, this whole little area right here, it's just all catfish. There ain't gonna be no bass. Uh, some guys in the tournament, one boat, they said they hooked up, both of them hooked up on catfish at the same time. Seemed like a lot of people were, catfish were hooking up. I'm not sure what was going on. Some other people slayed the bass. I mean, there's always, always, somebody's always going to find them. So, uh, that was my, that was my ABA tournament, uh, for last weekend. Um, tomorrow, uh, Potomac River Series. Um, this one's called the Double Down. Usually, I think the entry free is 110 a boat. This one's 120. Um, so the payouts will be bigger. It's going to be out of Leesylvania State Park. It's uh, it's a team thing. So, buddy of mine, Mark, like I said, he I roomed with him in the 90s. Um, took him out a few weeks ago and I think I don't think he's fished a lot in the last 15 20 years and I think he got the bug back so uh, he's definitely in so I texted him this morning the itinerary be at the house at 345 this way we can leave if you know get on the road at 4 get down to the boat around 420 ish 430 ish hook up the boat get the Leeselvania Star State Park by 5 register probably 20 30 minutes to register 15 20 minutes to get the boat in get comfortable and launches at 6 a.m so we will figure out uh we'll figure out how i think tomorrow um i think i'm gonna go across try to catch some retreads first why not um i don't know if they're having any tournaments but I'm going to go across in a man or woman and out of State Park and see if we can hook up first thing in the morning some retreads. Um, and we'll probably hit the bank again in the pier. And I know Mark likes structure, so I'll plan a couple things out. And, you know, the nice thing is, is it's from once you get out of the no wake zone, it's a it's not a fat, it's not a long trip right to live back to Leesylvania. So we might end up in there. Um, this will be my first time with the Potomac River Series. Uh, I wanted to do it last year, uh, but they don't. I didn't have a boat, and they don't do co. It's all team. Uh, last year they also did big bass tournaments, but um, the next three tournaments for them are double down. And part of it at is just the weather this year has been so crazy that a lot of tournaments uh, cancellations, rescheduling. Uh, Matter of fact, ABA I think is 18th, and then the next week is back to back, and I think it's because it's a makeup. Uh, and the Open Series is the one I'm concentrating on, so I'm looking at the two back, the the one back to back, and I think in two or three weeks I'm like, ooh, am I going to be able to do it? I I just may force it because that's the one I. We'll figure it out. Actually, we'll see how I do. If I suck it up with the 18th and the Chesapeake, then it really is, may not matter, but. Uh, we'll check it out. So, Potomac River Series, that's tomorrow. We'll see how that goes, and we'll go from there. Then the other thing, the last thing I wanted to talk about was reels. Um, man, there's a lot of reels out there. there. You can spend anything from 10, 15 bucks all the way up to thousands of dollars on reels. And part of this whole YouTube thing was to kind of say, hey, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get into tournament fishing or to tournament fish. Um, the reels you see right there, those are beginning reels. So I'm gonna kinda go through the reels that I have, but <clears throat> when I was fishing the Potomac, or I'm sorry, the Shenandoah, I wouldn't spend more than 15, 20 bucks. I go to Walmart and get one of those 15, 20 buck, five foot, six rod combos and uh, some people could be going five, six, damn, that's short. Dude, that's a crummy reel and rod. Yeah, and it was, but here's the thing, is when you're fishing on the Shenandoah, you're banging, I'm not paying a lot, you know, who wants to pay a lot of money for a rod and reel where you're banging and clanging it in and out of the canoe. Sometimes you're dipping it in into the river. You know, you get out, you wade. When you're wading, you know what? It, it, you catch a lot of fish on the Shenandoah. It's just, it doesn't matter take anybody out and you're gonna catch them um, but when you catch them in your way and I just put the water put the rod down in between 
you know, the reels in the water on hooks and you know there's no reason and you don't know, casting if you're in a canoe 15 20 feet is all you need because if you cast too far in a canoe and there's a current hey, you're not getting anything out of your bait um, if the river's really low and you're going slow you don't need to cast fire anyways because you're probably you just want to hit those pockets and the little eddies so these reels that you see here um, I'll go them these are all 40 to 60 dollar reels I got you know Fluger presidential reel and I like kind of bought these all at the same time um, I, I'm just like that I don't know why I did I think I had a couple hundred dollar budget I'm like well let's buy a bunch of them bought the Fluger because I heard a lot of good things about the Fluger. Now, I didn't rate these too harshly. Um, or rate them, you know. Here's the thing. I knew they were $40, $60 bucks, so I was going to take how they were with a grain of salt. But I wanted to get a baseline. Fluger has got a great name. A lot of people love it. I can tell you, even at this price point, I was... Me personally, I just, I've almost never used this reel. I just, I just didn't like it. I didn't like the bail. But these reels right here in the $40 to $60 range, what these reels are for, what they're perfect for. If you got a teenager that's fishing ponds, Burke Lake, Fountainhead, kind of beating them up, but you don't want to get the, you know, the $15, $20 combo. You want to get them a little bit of upgrade, but, you know, these are perfect for it. And even though I didn't like the Fluger, you know, some people like Daiwas, some people like Shimano, some people like Luz. It's really an individual choice. Fluger has a great name, so it's not something I tell you not to get. It's just for me, I didn't like it. Uh, I also got a, well, let's go with the Bass Pro. I went with the Bass Pro. I just went with a, this one, it, actually, it's got the price tag. This one was 50 bucks. Um, this actually is not a bad reel for 50 bucks. Again, high schooler, teenager. Um, <laughs> if you're a wife and uh, these reels are good enough, but enough, but not good enough, but just enough to tick your husband off. So if you've got a husband that gets you blenders and stupid crap like that for Christmas, get him one of these because this will be the perfect insult for him. Trust me. Um, good reels but if your husband's like finishing tournament yeah this is kind of a slap in the face saying this is what you're worth want to get me a blender fine i'll get you one of these great for young kids nine ten years old fishing at the pond nah get one of those um this one is actually not bad at all i did i bass pro i got it because i just figured bass pro it's probably going to be back it's probably not going to be great but it's not going to be junk from what i understand i think lose makes all the bass pros reels um neither one actually this one wasn't bad enough this one um i didn't like so i was like i'm not gonna try a more expensive reel when i do get up what i wanted was kind of a baseline i figured hey i'm at a point in my life why not spend a little bit more money i did not think i was gonna fish tournaments i didn't i just like my body's you know, I can't actually wade in the river too much because, man, that bottom slip, I don't have the balance anymore. Old age, yeah, that stuff sucks. Um, so I figured, well, let's try some nicer reels. And then when I started doing that and I started thinking tournaments, then I started thinking about upgrading. I'll get to those in the moment. <clears throat> then I went to a Daiwa and I bought a couple Daiwas. So I don't even know how to pronounce this. Legalis, Legalis, whatever. Um, and then the Regal, the Daiwa Regal. I got a, I actually have a 2500 and I have a 3500. These are both the 2500s. Um, I actually, I, actually, no, I'm sorry, both of these are 2500s. I was thinking of the BG series. I think this is a close to a $60 reel. And here's, I love these reels. Um, I, when it comes to spinning reels, I'm a Daiwa guy. I, I, for, I love my Shimano's, but for some reason, these things just are smooth. 
uh, bang for the buck for 50 60 bucks these are great reels uh, I, I see a lot of this reel on a lot of people's rods out there um, great value at that price point G again these all these right here in this range are for your teenagers uh, ponds lakes nothing too serious but they're also not super they're, they're not your cheapo 20 25 dollar combo reels um i rarely use those anymore um and, and basically if i go to the shenandoah and i go in a canoe I, i've gotten so used to my nicer reels um i do have them I usually keep them on other rods and they will be with me on tournament days this way I do have them rigged up on some other poles I have figured out my preferences on reels and what I like and I've kind of at least for spinning and I'm really homing it homing it down on the bay casters I'm not gonna go over base casters right now this is my first summer with bay casters they say you can cast farther with bait casters than a spinning, but I haven't figured that out, and I've yet to be on a boat where the where the guy in the front of the boat can outcast me, especially with my BG series. Um, and I'm gonna get to that in a moment. But so I'm gonna forget the bait casters for now. I'm not worried about the rods now. I haven't figured it out. But when I started fishing, and I'm like, I noticed these reels were definitely nicer than. 25 15 20 dollar 25 dollar combos i was getting from walmart but there wasn't a huge huge um difference sorry i had a text come through uh there was some difference but if i'm gonna get a rod and reel for 20 25 bucks spend an extra 40 bucks for a reel for fishing i don't know but i could there was enough difference to where i'd say they're definitely value for the money but i wanted to move up i'm like okay what is a what's the difference between these reels and a hundred hundred and fifty dollar reel so i did a lot of research and trying to figure out okay biggest bang for your buck because if I don't, if I spend a hundred dollars on a reel, I don't want to totally regret it. I at least want it to be quality. So the first thing I did was, is I actually bought um, a hundred and twenty dollar reel, and I bought the Johnny Morris Platinum Series reel. Quality reel hands down great reel love it don't have any issues with it probably a tad bit overpriced just because it has the name johnny morris bass pro shops on it um for 119 i think this one was 119 they may be different sizes usually might be a 10 dollar difference um but i can tell you this i have found some reels that are 129 dollars at hands down love it better than this not that this is junk it's just saying performance wise and now when you get into this i'm starting to nitpick um but i've also found some 99 and 109 109 dollar reels that are hands down the biggest bang for your buck on the market and they're extremely popular i didn't know how popular they were i just did my research i bought them and then when i go to tackle shops and i talk to people that they're like yeah man those things are real popular da 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 um and that's the shimano nasi I've got uh, I got two of them. Uh, I bought two of them because I also wanted to. Some reels go by two thousand, three thousand. Some go by twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred, forty five hundred. Um, I kind of wanted to see the sizes and so forth. But I got the Shimano Nasi. I got it in a three thousand and a four thousand. I believe three thousand was ninety nine dollars. I believe the four thousand was one hundred nine dollars. I think you can get this one from time to time at ninety nine. This is hands down the biggest bang buck for your buck on the market. Um, this will the Johnny Morris Platinum, great reel, smooth, cast far, have no issues with it, love it. A little bit smoother, cast a little bit farther. 
like it just a little bit and like it a lot more and it's less money I literally think that the, this and the Shimano might almost be almost the same real just I don't know but like I said I, I think the guy the kid at uh, Bass Pro told me Lose actually makes Bass Pro's spinning reels but if you are looking to get somebody a quality reel um, spend some money they want a spinning reel they do fishing they do a little bit more lakes and ponds or they just want one quality reel to have a quality reel hands down the best reel for the money in that in that market in the hundred dollar range um, we're gonna go over the difference between a hundred hundred and thirty dollar reel and a two hundred and fifty dollar reel because there's really not that much difference between them. even talking to other people I was shocked um, but hands down, I love the reel. I love the reel. The other one I have in the mid-range, this is kind of where I call the mid-range, is my uh, Daiwa BG series. I don't know what it is about Daiwa. I haven't driven a Buick in years, but I remember Buicks just used to have this steering that just felt like when you're turning the wheel, you're just turning to water. It was just so smooth. That's what reeling in a Daiwa spinning reel is for me. Um, these things cast just as far as, you know, the Nasty, Shimano, they, they all cast the same, about the same. Sometimes I get a little bit more out of this. Um, I put a frog on this on a seven foot one pole and I had some guy look at me go, I've never seen anybody cast a frog that far in my life. Um, I mean, this thing, pff, unbelievable not I don't have the reels with me they're all on my poles I, I didn't want to get all that one of, one of the hang-ups I have is I don't like anything but black colored rods I don't really don't want people to know what kind of rods I have I don't want to be part of the I, I just low-key you know I don't like the white and all that stuff my reels I like just to have one color silver you know, um, these are black with some gold, so I'm not crazy about the appearance. That's nitpicking. These are 100, 129 and 139. Um, I think because I bought, I didn't find one that I wanted to spend $99 on. So I think when I bought this, I was trying to compare something to the Shimano Nasi. And I'm like, what the hell? So I actually bought one of these. I think I paid $119 for. I have another one. And a couple, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, I was in Dick's and they had a rod and reel combo, the BG series with their BG series rod for 99 bucks. And I'm like, dude, I should grab that. But I think I had already spent so much money that week. I was like, eh, I'm going to hold off. Monday came around. I'm like, dude, I'm going to go buy it. I, it, I mean, the reel itself was a $119, $129 reel. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm paying for the reel. I don't care about the rod. The rod is just a bonus. Um, went back and it went up to, I think, oh, where'd it go for? It? 150 bucks. Yeah, the real rod combo went up to 150 bucks. I ended up buying it anyway, so I'm like, okay, the reel's 129 or 139. I'm paying 20, 30 bucks for the rod. Rod's not a bad rod. It's 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 a secondary rod for me. I do have the reel, my second one on it. Um, I have some pretty average. Most of my rods are 60 to 80 bucks. I do have a Dobbins Fury and I have a Saint Croix. Um, I'm trying to figure out how, what I like about rods and I'm starting to get there with them and kind of really hone in on them. Um, so, but the BG series, awesome rod, but if you're talking, you know, if you want, like I said, hundred bucks, I think the Shimano Ness is probably hands down for a spinning rod, the biggest bang for your buck. So then... <clears throat> The most expensive reel I have 
is the uh, Shimano Vanford. Uh, it's a $250 reel. Uh, they go way up. Um, I didn't pay $250 for this. So, what I do is, you know, for things like this, um, I have get upside, so I use get upside. I have Ibotta, and then, you know, all these other gift things. So, uh, at Christmas, I had a bunch of stuff I can turn in. My daughters gave me $50 gift cards, so I ended up paying like 86 bucks for a $200 reel. So, hands down, for 80 bucks, there's not a better reel in the world for 80 bucks brand new, that's for sure. $250. So, here's what I would tell you. Um, I started using it, and I'm like, this thing doesn't really cast any farther than the BG series or the Nassi. It's really no smoother or less smooth. I'm like, well, what the heck's the difference with it? So I'm fishing, I'm fishing, and then I'm in a turn. Actually, it was the open series. Um, I put the rod and reel down, and I pick up the Nassi, and it was like picking up a brick. Uh, so I went to Jake, you know, I went to Jake's because I like going to Jake's out in Winchester. It's a destination point, um, bait store. And I was talking to them. I'm like, yeah, the only real difference I have and kind of one of those things where we finish each other sentences is weight. That is, for me, ended up being huge because with my arthritis and my hands, usually I can't, at the end of a tournament day, my daughters have to open up bottles, cans, whether they be pull, twist, um, aspirin or ibuprofen, can't, you know, my hands just don't move and a lot and it was, it was only half as bad with the weight of this thing. Um, and for me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to also probably get the Daiwa Tatua, which is $199, but I, uh, now I will start looking at weights and I am sure there are many more when you get up there the casting and handling and all that is different but I'm telling you for the level that I'm at for the most part it was weight I, I think there was a three ounce difference and it doesn't sound like much but when you're making cast after cast after cast hour after hour after hour I mean we get out there I mean blast off tomorrow's at six it'll take us for our first spot 15 minutes and then weigh-ins either two or three I gotta figure I gotta find that out but wherever we'll be we're not gonna be more than 30 minutes away so that's a lot of cast um, the Shimano Vanford was a it's an awesome reel I love it um, I'm actually kind of screwed because <laughs> Every time I put it down, uh, I'm like, wow, these, as much as I love my BG series and as much as I love my Nassi, I have this on a Fury rod and it is light, extremely light, and it is so nice to handle to wear. Uh, but uh, we're talking about the, the the rod is a, I believe I believe the Fury was a hundred and thirty hundred and fifty dollar rod two fifty. So if I want these, if I want that setup, we're looking at a four hundred dollar setup. Um, I don't know how many four hundred dollar setups I can really afford unless I start winning some tournaments. But if I win some tournaments, I need to get some other stuff on my boat and pay some bills first. But three levels for you kind of the entry level above your junk reels okay let's call the you know the <clears throat> the first set kind of your entry level above your first set of junk reels um legalis regis regis uh bass pros 40 60 they're all gonna be you know if you want a little bit of better quality i would stick you know even I didn't do the lose, and lose has got a good name. I, and here's what I will say about lose: just so uh, 
I didn't when I I didn't like the reel on the spinning on the lose. I, it just didn't feel right when I was in there, so I never bought one. But I bought a lose baitcaster, and I bought a platinum. I bought a Johnny Morris baitcaster, which I really I actually it sucks. I really I, I'm not even good at baitcasting, and that thing I don't like it at all. Um, I also bought the Daiwa Tattoo CT which is a very, very popular, um, the, the Tattoo line is very popular, Baycaster Reel, and I bought the Luz XP, and for Baycasters, I love the Luz. Um, I don't think I will get another Tattoo. I was gonna get a Corrado, but um, I think with Baycasters, I, I don't think I'm gonna go all over the board like I did with spinning. Uh, I think for baitcasters, for me, it's always going to be a niche thing. I do like how you can cast fast and everything, but uh, it, it is what it is. So, back to spinning. You got you know your entry, but if you're looking for you know a hundred dollar reel. Shimano Nasi is hands down biggest bang for your buck. So that's what I got for you today. Uh, Devil Dog Fishing um, again tomorrow. Potomac River Series. Uh, GoPro. <laughs> Making progress. It may take a while. Uh, it's going to take a while. I got some footage. Figured out how to download DaVinci, whatever it was. Figured out how to actually, took me some time to figure, bring this, put it in that little card. And I mean, God, I mean, what happened? I just discs into the computer I had to find a little thing and now I had to move it man it's just not easy taking stuff from a disc it used to just be easy boom 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 I don't know I guess that's old I'm getting old and stupid um, got it into DaVinci and then I think I learned some things um, and by learning uh, I kind of lost all the footage which there wasn't much footage anyways um, but I'm gonna have to figure out the I'm gonna have to really dive into this YouTube editing thing because I don't get it at all I've even thought I've even looked up at some tutors because everything I've read is, is once you get started it's pretty easy and everything I've read is even the biggest idiots can usually start editing just basic stuff within the first few hours and I'm not looking to do mass stuff. I'm just looking to cut a minute before fish is caught to a minute after, maybe, you know, and kind of get the boat going and speed it up so you don't have to watch the whole thing and just create, you know, a couple minute reels of fish catching so you're not watching it. It was cool. The footage was clear. I was like, damn. Um, but that's kind of where the GoPro's at. So. I'm gonna try to get another one out in the next week. Uh, what I also want to do is I kind of want, I, I'm not gonna talk about rods. Uh, I think I am gonna do one on the cost. Like I said, this is part of, doesn't take a lot of money where you can save. Um, it's kind of cool. I got an old friend of mine who gave me a call and said uh, he's gonna fish the ABA. This one I already won a couple small week night tournaments, which is cool. Um, so <clears throat> we'll see what happens uh i'm gonna probably go down there and maybe fish later this summer but we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, i'll try to get something out next week um and then we'll go from there so for all two or three of you watching i appreciate it and semper fi Ura, devil dog